Are smartphones controlling our brains? That may sound like a sci-fi inspired conspiracy theory, but recent research has actually shown that social media algorithms have a huge impact on our brain activity. So today I'll be going over a study on what exactly these different social media algorithms like TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter are doing to our brains. Hey there, I'm Mish and I'm a full-time researcher with my PhD and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other people's studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. Today I'll be mostly focusing on a study that looks at how TikTok algorithms affect people's brain activity, but this also applies to social media algorithms more generally. And then I'll talk about how this information applies to your life, and then at the end I'll tell you about my personal approach to social media. In this study, the researchers had participants watch TikTok videos while inside a brain scanner. And in one condition, participants watched videos that were chosen for them by the algorithm. So they were personalized videos chosen just like your algorithm would on your phone for your own TikTok. In the other condition, participants saw non-algorithm chosen videos. So these were just generalized, popular video suggestions that TikTok would give to a brand new user if the algorithm hadn't gotten to know that user yet. And the researchers compared participants' brain activity between these two types of videos. They also assessed people's levels of TikTok use and the severity of TikTok addiction scores, and they found that about 6% of people could be classified as having a pretty bad TikTok addiction, so an actual behavioral addiction, potentially. And they also found that people who had more symptoms of TikTok addiction, so using it more often and having more compulsive checking, had lower self-control. And there are three main results pertaining to brain activity, so I'll go through them one by one and then explain how they all fit together into one cohesive story. And for all of these results, it's comparing people who watched algorithm-served videos versus people who just watched generally popular videos. They're still very interesting videos, but not ones that were selected by this algorithm. And people who saw the algorithm-selected videos had higher activity in the DMPFC subsystem of the default mode network, aka a network that is responsible for self-referential processing and also is involved in the feeling of getting your attention sucked into something and getting really immersed in something. The researchers also found that in people watching algorithm-served videos, this network actually talked more to brain regions responsible for visual and auditory processing. So what the researchers thought was going on is that the algorithm is tapping into self-relevance and your past and personal identity in a way that actually causes you to grab more attentional resources and spend them on watching those videos. And this is a way to keep you hooked on watching that video because it's very relevant, it's very interesting, and then it just sucks in your attention more and more. The second main brain activity finding is that people watching algorithm-served videos had decreased connectivity with regions responsible for self-control. So the researchers interpreted this as reflecting the algorithm actually deactivating your self-control mechanisms in a way that keeps you watching for longer and makes it harder for you to disengage and do whatever else it is you want to do besides watching TikTok videos. And the third main finding has to do with reward processing. So for both groups watching both the algorithm videos and the generally popular videos, the researchers found that participants had increased activation in the substantia nigra, which is related to reward processing, especially for things that are salient or interesting. But more importantly, in people who watched algorithm-selected videos in particular, they also had increased activity in a different reward processing area called the ventral tegmental area. And the reason this matters is that the ventral tegmental area is the main place in your brain where addictions are formed. And research has found that it's heavily involved in forming, maintaining, and getting you to act on other types of addictions like drugs and smoking and other behavioral addictions like video gaming and gambling. And because we know that social media is addictive and it's even being considered as an addition to the DSM of psychiatric disorders, it seems like what the researchers are picking up on here could be the formation or maintenance of a behavioral addiction specifically to social media. And how addiction works is primarily through reinforcement learning, where your brain learns that this stimulus equals good things. So the first time you downloaded TikTok on your phone and you watched some videos, you probably thought, hey, that was interesting and fun, and your brain got a bunch of dopamine, so it's going to reinforce that behavior and increase the chance that you do it in the future. And then from there, it becomes a habit, which is the next stage of addiction formation. 
where it starts getting incorporated into your daily routine. So you might start doing it in bed or while you're on your lunch break. And then even while you're out with your friends, you're there on TikTok. And then the next stage after that is compulsive use, where you find yourself feeling like you have to use it or checking it without even realizing it. So you might have the app open on your phone and think, wait, how did I even get here? And one way to test if you're in this stage is if you find it hard to resist the urge to check and you even get uncomfortable or kind of restless if you try to resist the urge to check whatever social media app or spend time on it. And no judgment because I was there for a long time. And our VTA is pretty much involved in every step of this addiction forming process from initially reinforcing the behavior to making it more compulsive and maintaining that addiction in the long term. So these brain activity results paint a picture of how algorithms contribute to getting people hooked on social media. First, they make things very self-relevant, they activate these self-referential processing regions in a way that really hijacks your attentional resources and gets you sucked into whatever the content you're looking at. And then it actually decreases your ability to use your self-control regions by deactivating those networks so that you stay on the app longer and you have a harder time disengaging. And then it contributes to the formation of addiction by really hyperactivating your reward centers in a way that reinforces that behavior and keeps you coming back. And if that's not worrisome enough on its own, more and more studies are coming out every day showing how internet use and social media use have long-term lasting negative impacts on us. So for example, people who use social media and the internet more have poorer memory and poorer working memory. And also it's been shown that people who have behavioral addictions like addiction to social media have blunted reward processing, so they're actually not able to derive as much pleasure from other things that usually give people reward. So for example, things that might have given you excitement and reward in the past, like finishing a big project or reading a book or going on a walk with a friend, are suddenly pretty boring and not very rewarding or motivating compared to an app that can serve you a hundred personalized, super interesting, super fun things per hour. And for a weirder finding, social media has actually been shown to make you weaker during workouts if you use it during and before your workouts, and also causes cognitive fatigue. So if you're interested in that, check out this video here. And I think that all these results combined imply that the worst types of social media in terms of all these bad effects are going to be algorithm-based social media. So Facebook, before the implementation of the algorithm, wasn't really getting people addicted, but adding that endless scrolling newsfeed and then that catching on to Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and everything else has really started causing people to get hooked. And I think that's the main cause of all these negative effects on people. As these brain activity results suggest that at least a good chunk of negative effects are indeed coming from algorithms themselves rather than just watching the videos. And on that note, I have a recommendation that I've heard floating around for if you want to be able to watch YouTube without the algorithm giving you recommendations or dragging you around. There's this, I think it's a browser extension called DFTube or Distraction Free YouTube. I haven't actually used it because I don't watch YouTube. I actually listen to podcasts while doing chores. It's my dirty little secret. But if you find yourself getting lost in the algorithm or rabbit holing or getting distracted, then you can actually get rid of YouTube recommendations by using this browser extension. So I've heard good things, but I can't vouch for it myself. Just thought I'd put it out there. So now for my own approach to social media, I've always had a complex relationship with it because I hate the vanity metrics and the social comparison and the addictive nature of it. And I especially hate the fact that it's just based on an attention economy where all these companies are fighting as hard as they can to suck up as many minutes of your life as humanly possible into their app so that they can maximize their profits. I don't like that part, but I do love the sense of community and the inspiration and the knowledge sharing. So I've always kind of been internally struggling with those two things. But over the last few years, I've been developing this approach that I only recently actually found a name for, which I love the name. It's digital minimalism, which was coined by Cal Newport in his book, Digital Minimalism, which I highly recommend reading if you're interested in this stuff. But generally what I've been doing is trying to figure out what parts of social media are actually important to my life and that I actually get value out of and get rid of everything else. So the things that I get the most value out of are sharing these videos with you and being able to post occasional updates on Instagram with little facts and like garden stuff, and then being able to get hard to find hobby information from Reddit and on bread and knitting and recipes and gardening. So that's all the reasons that social media actually contributes positively to my life pretty much. And so I've cut away literally everything else. So now all I do 
is I go on YouTube to upload these videos and I'll have one or two sessions per week where I answer your comments. And then I'll go on Instagram once or twice a week to post a story and answer some messages. And then I will go on Reddit like 10, 15 minutes a day to look at only bread and knitting and gardening and recipes. So I have it perfectly curated so there's no outside other kind of content that could distract me. And what I've realized is that not knowing the nitty gritty details that my friends are posting about selective aspects of their day hasn't really affected my relationship with them because I just text people <laughs> and call them and stuff. So I don't think social media is actually that necessary to be actually social with people you know. It's just my personal take though. And importantly, in none of these activities am I being served content from an algorithm. I never scroll through news feeds. I only selectively go to the subreddits I want to go to. And on Instagram, I don't go on the news feed at all. And on YouTube, I don't like go down rabbit holes or anything watching videos. And now I spend less than 20 minutes a day on social media, whereas I used to spend over two hours a day, mostly on Instagram for years. And let me tell you, my life has done a complete 180 since drastically reducing my social media use. Like my mental health is better than it's ever been. And my productivity is way better than it's ever been. Like I didn't even know I could do this much stuff in a day. It's like I literally was just given three free hours every day to make these videos and to do more of my hobbies and to just have more quality time that isn't just sucked out of me by a company and their algorithm. And I also find that I have much better focus. So it's much easier for me to stay on task, especially for really hard things where I used to have to disengage a lot, like learning Python is something I've been doing the last few months and I'm finding it so much easier now to learn really hard new things without getting distracted. So that's been amazing. So I'm realizing it's kind of ironic that you can thank my drastic reduction of social media use for the fact that I'm now able to post weekly videos here on social media. <laughs> but I do think that seeking information and educational content from sites like YouTube and Reddit is a totally different category from newsfeed scrolling and just entertainment and distraction from things like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. Because if you're actually seeking knowledge, I think it's just a useful thing, as long as you're making sure that you're not getting sucked down rabbit holes against your will. So if you find that happening to you, I do strongly recommend getting distraction for YouTube extension to stop all the recommendations and autoplay and whatnot. And then I also recommend on Reddit doing a curated subreddit for yourself or whatever it's called, multi-reddit where you just choose the specific things you want, like bread and gardening and not news and not politics and nothing that's gonna be driving you crazy or sucking you in. So I hope you've enjoyed my little soapbox speech here. I've become really passionate about the issue of social media's effects on us, largely because of all the research that's come out. So that's actually what spurred this whole interest for me is just the massive boom in research over the last few years showing all the bad effects it's likely having on us. And the research is actually what spurred me to cut down my own social media use and then to just absolutely massive benefits on my own life make me really wanna share this with you in case you can get these benefits too. But I'm gonna keep it quarantined to these occasional social media themed videos because I know this is not everyone's cup of tea. But thank you for watching and I hope that if you weren't interested in this stuff before that you might be a little more interested now. And if you are where I was, where you feel like you're spending way too much time on social media and you want to have better mental health and more focus and everything, then I do recommend finding ways to reduce the negative impacts of social media on your life. And a great way to do that in terms of concrete tips is to check out Cal Newport's Digital Minimalism. I'm just a big fan of him because he is also a PhD researcher and he has really great productivity books and podcasts and everything. So if you're interested in that, I have linked it in the description below. And if you find my content useful and you want to support me in making these videos, then please head on over to my GoFundMe or my Patreon. The GoFundMe is for one-time support and the Patreon is for monthly support where you also get bonus content and get to weigh in on what I talk about in these videos and chat with me more and other patrons. So if you're interested in any of that, I've got links up here and below. If you like this video, please like it and share it so that other people can get this information and learn how social media algorithms might be affecting them. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.